Okay, anyways, enough of that, let's get started. So, one more time. we'll do two quick saves here. And what that does is, uh, basically, we skipped this little cutscene where we we're supposed to be taking a nap in our bed, and uh, now we don't have to watch that nap where we get really woken up. Trask yeah. is really confused, and now there's some other complicated stuff. So yeah, he just moved into a very specific X coordinate there that resulted in uh, the game doing some pro improper bounds checking on the exit door to this module. So he just teleported straight out. And now he's doing a uh, glitch called a hot shot that's allowing him to teleport back into the command deck. And he's going to do the same glitch again. He called this glitch a DLZ, by the way. Uh, and that's going to result in uh, him becoming invincible because we have a minimum of one HP during the tutorial section. And usually a script takes that away, but since we return and then go back, the script never gets to fire. So yeah, we're invincible now, and we are running on the spire. We're, we're doing our thing. Yeah. Um, I was kind of tuning out there for a second. So I don't know if you mentioned that uh, the V-Sync deal. Um, so this game has kind of like a weird movement system where we run it at higher frame rates. Kind of like... If we're running against an object, we'll kind of bounce a little bit, which, oh, yeah. lets, which lets us hit like that more uh, specific spot that we're looking for a lot easier. So, yeah, with kind of, like what really boils down to is the reason these DLCs really work is because since our frame rate is unlimited whenever V Sync is disabled, um, every single frame the game is checking where you're standing, and since the frame rate's higher, you get your location gets checked more often. So it's more likely you're going to catch that one instance where you're standing in the exact right position. See? Told you guys, you don't have to have a big brain. I don't know stuff all the time. Yeah, all take right. two up in fighting there, because we will be using two swords. And so here he does at what's called an AMG, or an Anywhere Menu Glitch. Uh, this one's not used for its usual purpose. We're actually going to use it to do a thing called pop-up replacement. Or he's going to replace the pop-up of the uh, Vibrosaur uh, purchase prompt, and then buy two stun strings. Now allow us to the negative credits. Once we're in negative credits, they're effectively infinite. Uh, you know, technically they're not infinite, but it it take like actual years to loop back around. So yeah, and with that he buys a whole bunch of explosives, some drugs, and he hops out and gets ready to go. Because you know that was a pretty bad Loreem. Yeah, that's okay though. Sometimes we flub. No big deal. Uh, now we're going to uh, separate Karth and the main character, and we're going to set up for what's called a Gip Warp, um, which is another, in this case, execution of a uh, of, uh, AMG. So, there we go. Okay. So essentially, I'm able to hit that trigger there, and since... Um, Karth is too far away uh, from the main character. It gives us the, uh, you must gather your party before you venture forth pop-up. Um, and we're able to switch that pop-up over to the main character since we regain control of our character movement uh, right. through the use of AMG. Yeah, and so like the thing is, is that usually that like dialogue prompt will teleport the main character backwards slightly so they don't get stuck in the door. But since we swap to somebody else, it just teleports the other person to the waypoint instead, which has a lot of crazy applications because it's actually checking the uh, nearest waypoint rather than uh, the correct one that corresponds to the door. We use that to teleport all over the place. We're gonna see it again in a moment here where uh, Karth is going to teleport to the exit. So also, you might be wondering why are we going on this mass murder spree here? Well, we need these guys close. You know, that's just how it goes. Whoops. Yeah, we really needed their clothes. Uh, pothole? Why do potholes happen? I still don't know. So, I can explain it. It's kind of a bit off topic, but I mean... Go for it. So, yeah, these modules are made up to have a, uh, files associated with them called walk meshes. And every individual walk mesh which determines where, what like, areas have collision. Uh, they are separated into these different things called rooms. And wherever two rooms meet, there's this particular place along the scene between two rooms where um, the game doesn't recognize that it's walkable terrain just because of how it works. It's actually pretty similar to how there's just a tiny area where a DLZ can happen. There's this tiny space where a pothole can occur. 
where uh, you know just the scene for these between these two rooms. And so if your character happens to land there, they'll get stuck, and you're gonna have to run around. So, yeah, that's how probably what's happened. <laughs> So now we're about to get our final bit of required XP that we really need for the run. Um, which is killing this sentry droid and then killing some of the guys over there in a moment. We're still getting a sub-5 guy in Kira start, so that's good. That's a good grenade on Gaden. Gaden shit. That's a much better get in Kira fight. Yeah, that was great. Okay, so we're gonna kill these guys here. And that should give the main character enough XP to reach level four. And so yeah, what happens is is when he's going level four, he's not really gonna do it in the traditional sense. He's gonna do what's called a fake level up, a blue FLU. So what's happening here is that uh, as he uh, levels up here, uh, he swapped over to Karth for the first level, during the level up using an AMP. And so what happens as a result of that is uh, the bullion that usually consumes, uh, like, whether or not a level is available, uh, gets consumed like Karth for the main character. So we can level effectively infinitely. And so he's going to take us all the way up to level 88. And the whole time he's going to be saving skills. By saving skills, he will have uh, enough skill points to get an insane amount of uh, ability to be here soon. Yeah, he's massing very fast. Fast match. Oh, he's going for it. And looks like we have about 34 more levels to go. Ideally, he finishes this whole trick before, like, you know, 7.30. That's, like, a great time. He looks like he's on pretty good pace right now. So let's see how it ends up. See, so, yeah, we take 45 computer use for some hacking we'll do later. 7 persuade or more, doesn't matter. Just so we can talk to an Athorian on Kashik. And then 91 security so we can open some impossible doors. All right, well, that yeah. was better than my PB. Yeah, 706 uh, flu, great. Now let's see if I can get a better exit than I did earlier today. So yeah, that door he just went through there, usually that door is impossible to open. <sighs> but since we had 91 security, it was meant to be split, no problem. <laughs> that was not that great, but that's okay. Yeah. We're gonna set up a save here in Javiar's Cantina. This is gonna be used for uh, fast lanes and for us to hotshot back to later. And then we need to re-enter into the uh, upper city. So that way we still retain the flu later on because of hotshots. Um, oh, come on, there we go. What's all these quick saves you do there? <laughs> uh, it helps make sure that the main character follows. That seems a little excessive. <laughs> that's what you've said every time, but I always have the main character follow me there, so that's my justification. And there's no quick saves anywhere else on the run, really. I do a quick save there to make sure that the, the Volcar doesn't stun me. I mean, my main character follows just fine. I don't quick save at all. <laughs> I, I have a lot of issues with it. Okay. And yeah, maybe you're just bad, too. Yeah. That's definitely true. We have a set of uh, Kuti, Shani, Muli, Rao, Shang, Kuti, Ling, and me back to Olamak and Shana Tize. Close enough. Yeah. And that means it's time for us to go do some swoop racing. Yeah, basically. You guys following? Is this making sense? There's going to be a test at the end of this. Yeah. So we have to do a race because for whatever reason that makes uh, you know a war criminal show up what? in a bar who's going to tell us to go... Uh, well, actually, we're just going to show up after having broken into a government facility and stolen some information, and he's going to let us uh, steal a ship. We're not going to talk about how I messed that up there. Yeah. <laughs> I just, like, brain farted really hard on what I was supposed to do. I got so fixated on doing a... Uh, AMG that I forgot about the buffer for some reason.
Our keyboards love this. It's very healthy for the keyboards to get this kind of treatment from KOTOR. So yeah, what happens here is right now the variable still states that we uh, finished the race and we cancel the conversation before they change that back to needing to do another race. So we just talk to the Authorian again and it counts for both race completions. And now we're doing another hot shot to uh, teleport back to the upper city north. Oh, some bad luck there. Oh yeah, very bad. And so now we're gonna go break into a government facility and, you know, do some murder. So this is actually basically the final boss of the game here. We don't really fight anyone else for the rest of this run. Ugh. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird level. All right, so we're we're gonna kind of do another gip here to uh, skip past uh, actually having to go through the sit base really. All right, and now we're gonna fight the governor. Hopefully, he's not gonna be a jerk. I don't yeah, know what I'm doing. The Sith governor basically makes or breaks these runs, so we try our best to do some good for Okay. It. He seems to be really bullying Karf this time around, which isn't the end of the world. But... That's oh, nice. Fun. Yeah, I, I take that governor run on a good day, even. Okay, so now we're going to return back to Javier's Cantina, and since we now have the Terrace launch codes, and we've, you know, proven that we're the best in a... Uh, proven that we're the best swoop racer, then uh, Andrus is ready best. to take us off. We're the very best, like no one ever was. We're gonna rush in here, and so Davik's gonna give us a little tour, and we're gonna be like, oh wow, you have a ship? Well, mind if I take that? And he's gonna stare at us. He's gonna give us that thousand yard stare. While we uh, just take the ship and leave. All right, and just like that, we're we're off to Danny Ween. Danny Ween, jeez Louise. Uh, yeah, that's that. My split name's Dan's Ween. Okay, so here we're gonna do another DLZ in just a moment. Yep. First, we're gonna just skip past uh, Belay of Air. She usually has a trigger for us, but we're just not gonna worry about it. Okay. Yeah, you might need a quick save and quick load before you can uh, do things because you saw the dialogue queue going. We're gonna hopefully get this. Nice, that was pretty quick. Oh, all right, that works. And we're gonna move forward a little bit here, and then we're going to do another one of these dialogue queues in order to skip a couple more. So, yeah, what's happening here is because Candorus is actively trying to talk to us, everybody else in this game is really polite, and so they're not going to bother trying to talk to us. So it's, you know, yeah. You know, they're all waiting their turn, and since Chaos isn't letting Candorus get his turn, nobody else will talk to us, and we can just run past all these cutscenes and conversations. Oh, wow. This looks like it's another really good Calf Hound RNG. Yeah, it's, it's a nice spread. I'm like, go a little wide here, but that's okay. All right, and you see this return Evanhawk pop up. This is a trick called a fast lane, which who knows what that was named after. And uh, yeah, it's gonna allow us to clip through this door here by uh, retransiting at a right angle to it and then coming back to a party member. Oh, that was really good. That's an insane DLC, wow. Anyway, so yeah, he just uh, did another displaced loading zone there to uh, trigger the ruins uh, transition very early. And so we are yes. already in here way before we're supposed to be in here. And yeah, so just like that, uh, we're gonna try and do one more DLZ. This will trigger the uh, star map and Please. basically wrap up Dantamine for us. Uh, that is a 30 second gold right there. So yeah, we are actually on world record pace right now, which is funny. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, let's just hop right into this.
Ugh. Alright. Yes? So. Now Basil's gotta talk to Vandar, which will cause the main character and her to swap. And now uh, the main character can talk to Vandar, and so since we've now found the star map, the main cutscene that he wants to trigger, the main conversation he wants to trigger, is the one where he tells us about the, the star maps and figuring out where to go and all that kind of stuff. But if we were to talk to him again, we would uh, do the whole situation where we become a Jedi. Did I mention that we don't become a Jedi in this run? Oh yeah, yeah, who needs to be a Jedi? I mean, it's not like this is a Star Wars game or something, screw that. You don't need to equip an alacrity there, by the way. Your, your alacrity should still be fine. Oh, going. yeah, you're right. Uh, I think I should still be fine. Yeah. I might be able to uh, drop one of them. I saw that you almost went to Manon there. I did. <laughs> you think about the old any percent route. This route changes constantly, by the way. There's constantly, you know, it's just an ongoing think tank of how we can optimize it more and more honestly you know the optimization and scale of ceiling for kotor is just so high that i don't think we're anywhere near the best that this run could be okay um so now we are doing kashik now you mentioned that usually we go to manan first um that's a, a kind of like has a bunch of old old stuff to it um, the most recent of which we bought a bunch of thermal detonators and then left there. But now we figured out a method where we only have to go to Kashyyyk. And we're going to do everything right here. Because we realize that our main character is a multiversal level being. Yeah, main character is actually just an eldritch god. I mean, you know, there's, there's no really uh, any other, you know, explanation for it. I mean, you're literally going to be doing some time traveling and some, you know, breaking the uh, bounds of universal logic here. Okay, so we're gonna do another, uh... Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, it's alright, you can just redo it real quick. Okay, yeah, please cooperate with me. Uh... I had to make sure that I didn't mess that up and overwrite my quick save. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yes? Okay. So, now Kalanord is supposed to spawn here, but we're gonna do another hard buffer here to skip him. I think yes. that's the first ever uh, sub-16 Upper Shadowlands. <laughs> <laughs> the random goal. Uh, let's see, Guitar Pattern was actually reasonable. It wasn't the optimal one. But... Chaos does this section slightly differently from me, but uh, yeah, he's basically going to be doing some movement during uh, Dolly's conversation. Which, honestly, if you're doing the setup like that, you can probably cancel the conversation earlier and get some slightly more efficient movement. Probably. Go wide here. It looks like the attack body block oh. each one, which is interesting. For some reason, she was... I'm... I forgot solo motor. Oh, yeah, that would do that. Yeah, that could be issues. You want Hopefully she's not still running. Sometimes they get stuck in that cycle. You want it? I'm here. Oh, where is she? Shit, she is all the way over here. All right. Well, so much for that world record. Anyway, uh, uh, we could still gain time, but the uh, the Mali fight was awful. That's true. Yeah, this I should probably... have called if your health was dropping. I could have called that out. Oh well. well. Oh my god, please. Yes. Oh, there you go. Hopefully her four speed doesn't run out here, otherwise... That was kind of a suboptimal section. We wanted Vasilo to stay next to Jolie, so that way we could have done a character swap afterwards and had an instantaneous... Uh, Discussion of Joe Lee from the end of the uh, emitter uh, sequence. So, yeah. A little unfortunate there, but we still are on a pretty decent pace. Okay, now for uh, the routine. Alright, um, so he's gonna return to the Ebonhawk here, and so that's gonna put his party members in a position, and the coordinates that his party members are at right now happen to match up with an area pretty close to the star map in the lower Shadowlands. 
somebody doing a hot shot, they're gonna go spawn over here. there. Yes. And so Bastila is gonna run and uh, get the computer for uh, Chaos real quick. And that's gonna get our first of the four star maps that we're gonna get here. Yeah. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be duplicating star maps. And that's for the whole time travel and parallel universe garbage stuff that we were joking about earlier really comes into play. So, uh, what's gonna end up happening here is we're gonna return back to the Evan Hawk and we're gonna do what's called a routine. And so what the routine does is we're t essentially attempting to create a new character while we still have the game open in the background. And so that's going to delete all the content in the game except for, uh, well, sorry, not all the content, all the content in our save, except for um, the current uh, character that is loaded in at the moment. And so by doing that, uh, the, uh, of course, the star map that we just got has been uh, restored back to its original state because the progress we got in that area has been deleted. So we can go and get it again and it'll still save the uh, variable increase on the, uh, for the global variables. So, we're gonna go get our second star map here. And so this is going to be two down, two to go. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> just That's just the trick of not messing it up. <laughs> And he does it a bit differently than I do. He's doing a newer version where you don't have to quit out of the game. Oh. So this is our third star map, right? Yeah. Yep. And now to uh, go and do our last routine. And then go hotshot one more time to get our fourth and final star map. Yeah, so that mistake with uh, Basila cost me like 30 seconds. Unfortunate. Um, we can still pull this back some. Yeah. It will require some uh, some good luck. Right, I'm gonna skip this uh, this alacrity here and then just use the alacrity on. Uh... Right, because you have two remaining. Right. I mean, the easy answer would be just buy more alacrity. It takes like a fraction of a second to enter an additional time. Yeah. Yeah, it should probably be uh, buying like eight or nine. I just don't count. I just mash for like a moment and then move on. Ah, uh, that's no a bad luck. Counter. That's too bad. That's a bit of a time loss there. Yeah, I think that the, the world record marathon dream is over, but that's okay. Um, yep. Sag. Oh well. Especially considering we, we needed to get really lucky on uh, this hot shot here. But I mean, who knows? We could just get really lucky on. Uh, we could get really lucky on this stuff here, and we could get really lucky on the Malak fight, and maybe we'll eke out something by a second. Yeah, maybe. Uh, do you know how to do the new Starforge stuff? Nope. No. Nope. All right. So I guess you can't get that. <laughs> how much of a time save is that? I think it's like, you know, 10 seconds. Oh, okay. Because, I mean, you don't need to move... Basically, because it, you end up doing the hot shot just like the one you're doing uh, for Capture, it, where it's just, you know, quick save, O winner, quick save, O winner. Or O winner, in there, rather. Um, and then we want to all 
All right, so now we're going to go for another DLZ, and hopefully if we're lucky, uh, Jolie will be following us here. Uh, we're going to see his HP, and it went down, so he's probably in combat. And he's yeah. dead, so yeah, he, we're going to have to do a little bit of a safety strat here, but it's okay. Eh, he may have died nearby, we'll see. Uh, okay, all right, no, that's fine. Uh... As long as I get the uh, the door clip right this time, I think that'll be good. <sighs> that didn't work. Oh my god! That's a bit of a rip. Yeah. Uh, that might be too. He might be in the other side of your party. Maybe. Um, I always check the. I, I wasn't able to see because he keep running immediately, but usually I check to see what side he's in before I line it up. Try the other way. Usually shows up on the left, on the right side for me. Uh, that time it worked. Yep, he was on the left. <laughs> So it looks like we won't get any uh, Lahan miracles today, unfortunately. Oh, but... seems not. Not the case. You always wait so long to cancel this. <laughs> Come on, Bastila. We have. The hero farm is canceling it immediately. <laughs> Uh, please get out of combat. Oh, she one shot at him. Yep. I love to see it. It took like three or four combat rounds in the, my last run. So, yeah, since we didn't get the fighter encounter here and also had a less than ideal DLC, it might uh might And a failure. Really Almost certainly it. That's okay, we are nearing the end of the run, though. This is still a good run, all things considered. Yeah, and since we're uh, showing, uh, we're showing uh, in-game time on stream, but it's not, like, super underestimated or anything. Uh, right well, my it's estimate's 38 minutes. Yeah. He's still be pretty underestimated, but not as ultra as it seems. <laughs> all right. I think I can just do one there, but I always forget. What can I yeah, do? I just do the single. Okay, so now we're gonna do some... A little bit of a... Yes? Uh, please? Thank you. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of movement tech here. I'm here. By moving Bastila while the main character is moving, while we keep this, uh, um, this gip pop-up open. Yes? So we're just gonna... Yeah, be flourishing weapon to let her move during it. And that has to do with like giving like a flourish weapon counting as a combat, right? Not really. I think it's just um, the animation doesn't expect you to be stationary. And there's nothing like super special about that one. It's not some grand. <laughs> Can I do? Oh yeah, we also had a pothole. Oh yeah, in the uh, world record, that's true. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yeah, I suppose the world record's I'm possible here. if you have like a god now, like. But... I doubt it. 
It, I, it seems extremely unlikely. Yeah. What can I do? I'm here. I was a little potato there, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. That's another one you only need one buffer for. Paranoia. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. <laughs> Maybe, honestly. I mean, it'll be very close. Unless uh unless I just really do a bad job on Malik. Again. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Reddit. I would I'm here. Very close. That would have been record. Yeah, that would have been record had you not recorded earlier today. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, six seconds behind the world record for uh, those wondering. And yeah, you are um, about six minutes underestimate, which is great. Yeah. So uh, that was fun. That was a fun uh, run. Yeah, well